Hello and welcome to the first ever attempt at our uh, Locked On Jazz hangout, something or other. We'll see if this works or not. Thanks for all who have joined in. Some of you can watch it live on YouTube. Some of you are watching it later on YouTube. The best news you'll have on this, if it works correctly, is you'll have very little of me. Uh, and what instead you'll get is you will get a whole lot of... The cameraman feature does not work. Uh, you'll get a whole lot of other things. So if you could mute your mic, because I'm not going to take any of your questions, that would be great for me today. Um, if you haven't already done so, I understand that you can't, but I will try to make sure I do it as well uh, for everybody else. So um, hopefully that will work out, and we'll get this going. Here's the goal. We're going to walk through all of the jazz players. Who is that? Um... This is bugging me. Sorry, I'm going to try to get this fixed here before I, I'm muting every single one of you for the 17th time. Ah, maybe I just got it. Maybe not. Nope. I think it's Preston. If it's you, Preston, and I keep not being able to mute you for some reason, then I'm going to have to send you to Never Never Land. No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually, that's true. All right, so here's we're going to try this, see if it works. Thank you very much for tuning in. I apologize for the kind of rough start, uh, but let's start it. We're going to walk through the Jazz players uh, and their shot charts for the season. And we're going to see, hopefully this is going to look really cool, and I'm just going to go with the guys who kind of lead the way on all of it. We'll start with Al Jefferson's shot chart. So here is what Big Al's shot chart looks like for the season. Uh, and you can kind of look at it and the way it works and, and what it does. And what it does is it uh, shows you the different areas where he's had success. Now, as we all know, Jefferson gets most of his action over in the left block, and you can see there 37 shots on the left block, 27 shots from the left outside. So he's taking about 54%, 54 of his shots compared to 21 shots on the other side. So the first thing we notice on Jefferson, as we kind of all knew, left block heavy. Uh, the next thing you notice, though, is that when he does go right side, he's very good, which I think – is important in regards to uh, how you view him late in games. I think a lot of his late game success is based on this uh, as well because he is able to late in games get the ball where he's not supposed to and be able to have some success. And he really is a terrific late game player. So that's, the, that's what jumps out on Jefferson. Uh, you see actually straight away at that free throw line, he's really quite good, uh, which means – where that's relevant is probably on zone busting, that if people uh, are playing a zone and he comes out and gets the ball right there, he can make that jump shot. The last few nights what we've seen is that he goes, that he's hit that jump shot, uh, he's gone to the rim enough that they've backed off him and he's been able to then take that jump shot with a little bit more uh, success. So that, there's, there's Al's numbers uh, for that. Uh, just a quick note over in the chat room, if someone can let me know, can you see it all right? Is this working? Um, is this is this all? It's a little fuzzy, you say. Uh, every, does everybody else agree? Is it too fuzzy? No. Tom, uh, Gerald is a high standard guy, and I apologize. Somebody's mic, I cannot get. I, I don't know who it is. You know what, Preston? I cannot mute you for some reason. So I'm either going to have to kick you out, or I'm going to have to ask you to mute your mic. Can you can you hear me? Can you do that? I'm putting you up there. Can you hear that, Gavin? Crawford has muted you, too. We've all muted you. Preston, it's your mic that keeps coming through. For some reason, I it won't let me. Um, all right. So, Mark Whalen, you're saying you do not see the big shot chart in the middle of the screen? Well, I can't do anything about that. All right. So, that is uh, – that's Al Jefferson. Let's move now to our, our next player, which is Paul Millsap, our, our next most frequent player uh, to shoot. Uh, here and here is Paul Millsap. Boom! Bah. Yes, I am ejecting Preston. Let's see if this works. Um, no, I don't want to block him. I just want to eject him. Oh, look! The sound went away. Um, so Preston goes bye bye. Um, I wonder why I couldn't mute him, but I just couldn't. So here's Paul Millsap's uh, a different look at Paul Millsap for you. And Millsap's really, the red is where he is shooting below average, and it is stunning how much he is struggling. 
Now, if you recall, I may have shown this, some of this to you before, that in that area around where Paul shoots uh, around the basket, the what's kind of the dotted line, so that dotted line's at about 6 feet. The 6 to 12 feet range has actually always been an area where Paul struggles. He's very poor shooting 6 to 12 feet shots. Uh, he's just not big enough or tall enough to make those shots. What he's usually very good at is the 15 to 23 foot shot is a shot that he's usually able uh, to make and to do well on, and he is not doing well on that at all this year. That's what's very jump, jumps out. One of four, one of eight, two of six, four of twelve. So you can see uh, where why he is having such a scuffle offensively this year. It's interesting on the corner threes. You should be able to see he's six of five of six on the corner threes so far this year, uh, which has really made him fat. That's where he's had a great deal of his success and has been. Um, as good as good as he's been, and then that yellow is league average. So at the rim, he's just league average. But you can see that Paul really struggling in some of those uh, key spots along the way. I guess I could try to open this up for some questions on the chat, but it's hard for me to see them. Let's move next to Mo Williams, who, despite the fact he hasn't played much recently, is still relevant. So here's Mo for you uh, as you take a look at Mo Williams' shot chart and. Uh, Mo, it's really interesting is how much better he is on the right side of the floor than the left side of the floor, uh, which is probably hard for him right now with the Jazz because he's often throwing the entry pass into the left block to Al Jefferson. But if he gets over to the right side of the floor and so suddenly you have somebody else being able to uh, have that, uh, maybe Gordon starts throwing that entry pass or somebody else throws that entry pass, and then Mo is a spot-up three-point shooter over in that right angle, right area. It's it's a very good sign. Now, let me tell you something. We still have Randy Foy to come, and that is going to be unbelievable when you see what Randy Foy is from that spot, which is probably a large reason why Ty Corbin is starting Randy Foy and putting him on the floor with Al Jefferson in that unit. Uh, very impressive mid-range game from Mo. That 5 of 10 angle left inside the three-point line, 7 of 11 straight away, 3 of 5. That's a really neat spot for hit for Mo Williams. And what it would tell me a little bit is maybe the Jazz can find a way to go get some uh, mid pick and rolls going or lower pick and rolls going with he and Derek Favors or maybe let Paul Millsap uh, fly out there because I think that's where you could get some very, very successful play out of Mo Williams uh, in those plays along the way. I'm going to quickly check the chat room uh, and see if there's anything out there, but I'm, gonna, I'm probably just going to keep rolling on this first time attempt. We'll Obviously, as we always do, and I appreciate how willing you guys are to let me try these things, we'll try to continually uh, make them better every time uh, we do them. This is our first attempt at something this short. All right, let's move to Gordon Hayward, who is next on my list. Um, and here's Gordon Hayward's shot chart uh, for the season. And, uh, you know, Gordon obviously scuffling some, but some areas he actually looks pretty good uh, on that chart chart. You see he is, uh, I have him down at 6 of 14, for the oh wait a sec you have a different shot shot for Gordon Hayward than I do right now do you? let's make sure I have the right one up for you uh, Gordon Hayward on yeah so here you're seeing yeah all right so six of fourteen we actually have that we both agree uh, so there's the Gordon Hayward shot chart, and obviously there's a lot of red. His shot is not where it needs to be. What jumps out to me most on Gordon is check out the long range shots on the right side. Now, the right corner three is obviously a much more difficult shot for a right-hander. It's a much easier shot for a left-hander. Uh, and it would actually be interesting to see if CJ had success there off of Al Jefferson left post up swinging around to CJ, and that's why he's not having any success in, in Cleveland. But look at that. Three of 18 from the long-range right side from 16 to 23 feet and beyond. Gordon Hayward is is 3 of 18 on the right side of the floor. So for the 12 of you that ever watch this program, uh, when he takes a shot on the right side, you can get a little concerned. But then the next problem is the angle left 3, he's off, and straight away he's off as well. He's just 5 of 20. So it, things just aren't clicking uh, for him in his game yet. Uh, there are some areas where kind of angle right he feels is clearly – uh, more comfortable, and these are small sample sizes. Realize you dial one or two in, and you suddenly end up 
uh, with things switching a little bit. But this is where, uh, what you know, on this whole discussion of who plays with whom, there is an argument looking at this that you might argue he doesn't. You don't want him playing with Al because um, his shot chart doesn't actually match to that as well as some others. That might be a little too simplistic of a way to look at it in that regard, but it's maybe maybe something uh, to be said there. All right, let's move to Randy Foy, uh, the next one on my list. And Randy Foy, that angle right three is going to pop out to you immediately. Look at that. 16 of 31 from the angle right three. I mean, that is – and then – uh, the left corner has got to be off penetration and kick. You cannot get to the left corner off a left corner post up with uh, Al Jefferson. You just don't you, – that doesn't happen. So the left corner stuff has to come off some other type of action for the Jazz. The angle right three can come out of a left post up where they make the second pass and it's there. And, you know, as we're watching this team get a little bit better offensively every game, I think we're figuring out where guys can be on the floor to create for other people. But that is clearly Randy Foy's strength, and we've documented this a bunch. He's shooting very well from three and not shooting well from two right now. Uh, but really, when when you dig into it, he's, he's really left corner, three, and angle right are the areas. And now what I think is really, really interesting, by the way, uh, just to give you an idea of where the NBA is, yellow is average. Red is below average. He's 8 of 20 angle left. It's not like, you know, if he hits two of his next three there, he's 10 of 23. He's on fire. And they have that listed as average from that angle left. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of just how fabulous shooters are in the NBA right now on these three-point shots and the different spots uh, along the way for those three-point shots. Uh, so Randy Foy in the books. We look at as well. I'll take a quick check to the chat room. Yeah, I think you guys are communicating with each other a little bit. Um, man, nice, nice, Brett. I like that. Um, so I will continue to uh, just roll from the next one. Now let's go to Marvin Williams is the next one on the list of guys I have here. And here, here is Marvin's shot chart for the season. And Marvin, I think, unlikely to go tomorrow, by the way, would I would be pretty darn surprised. And we look at Marvin, nothing totally – I mean, that mid-range shot is just not falling for him. He was a left-side spot-up shooter last year. And he was beginning to get that going. You see in the left corner, he's 6 of 15. But look what happens if you run him off the three-point line. 0 for 6, 1 of 3, 1 of 3, 2 of 8, 3 for 6 on the right side. That is not – uh, that is not great. Hey, there's there's eye-opening information. But that is, I'm trying to add it together right now, uh, 9, 12, 20, 26. That's 7 of 26. Uh, who just joined us? Lon Jeffries joined us. Gavin's fast with the muting. I appreciate it, chat. You're awesome. That Lon Jeffries looks like he's a lawyer or something. He's got like a high-profile office, and he just joined us. Um, and he's having lunch. I like it. What are you having? You going to share any with us? I muted you. All right, there you go. Nice sandwich. All right, good. Glad to have you. <laughs> um, so uh, we look at Marvin. And, and by the way, Lon, if you're just joining in, you can go back and watch the other players. I'm I, Even though you're a lawyer and you're high profile or whatever you are in a big, real important office, I'm not going back and doing all the other guys just for you. Um, <laughs> I hope he's laughing. Uh, the So on Marvin, I just think that's what jumps out. You run him off that three-point line, and we've seen Marvin adjust to that a little bit going to the rim a lot harder. If you look at actually 61% around the rim is pretty high. If, if you go back to all the other guys we've looked at, that's better than almost everyone. Uh, and I think that that's a good sign. Marvin had a struggle last year finishing around the rim, and so you're seeing him uh, do a lot better job with that than he uh, has before. And time to move on. Our next guy is Derek Favors. Everyone's in love with Derek Favors. Nobody can understand possibly why Tyrone Corbin won't play this guy more, right? Everybody can't believe it. Well, can you believe it now? There are reasons. Derek's working very hard. He's making progress. But look at that. Mid-block, 1 of 9, 0 of 3, 1 of 4, right side long jumper, 
two of eight left side. He's actually hit two shots, and he's two of four on the year. That's got to open your eyes a little bit, guys. We love everything he does well, but so many of us as fans have become so emotionally tied to him, and I am, I am frankly included in this group as well. And defensively, he is just fabulous. But at 6'9", to be shooting 44%, for the seasons is a tough one to swallow. You look at what did we just talked about. Marvin was at 61% at the rim. He's at 51.9 inside that little area around the rim. Uh, for a guy his size, I think we probably knew that, but I'm going to guess if I look at Justin and, and Lon and Michael and Gerald and Gavin, who are live and actually have live cameras, all of you've got to admit, little surprised, right? Aren't you a little taken aback by... Uh, but Justin says just a little. Justin's not one to make very large mistakes. He only makes minor mistakes. That's the essence of who he is. Um, Gavin, you're not reacting over there, which either means that you do you agree this was a little stunning when we suddenly saw this Derek Favors um, thing? And uh, Lon is a lawyer, so you never get a straight answer out of him. I don't actually know if Lon is a lawyer, but he is now. So uh, there's Faves. Let's. Uh, we're getting close to the end. We will run most of the guys. Let's go to Damari Carroll, who started the year hitting some jumpers and as of late they have not been quite as much and there's not a there's not a lot of sample size here uh, for Damari but clearly uh, frankly there's a very little sample size I wouldn't worry about it a lot the one of six angle uh, is not great in that over on that red side but you know again he hits to his next two and he's three of seven and we're not worrying about it so I you know 52 percent in that restricted area again uh, those are really those are numbers that kind of jump out a little bit um, on everybody. Uh, let's continue. We will go from Damari to Mr. Cantor. Has Ennis Cantor, in fact, improved his wing jumpers? Or is this a figment of our imagination? Is it every time he makes one we remember it, we don't remember when he misses? Here we go. Yes. There it is. There is Ennis Cantor. What jumps out at us here? on Ennis Cantor is got to be the mid-block left stuff where if he does not get to the rim and he's got to take a turnaround jumper, fade back, he's 0 for 7, but the spot-ups left, 4 of 7, spot-up right, 1 of 2. That's That range out there is new. That's much better than it used to be, but you can see, other than the up-and-under Cantor or something to the rim, that left side where he's 0 of 7, that just shows you that that move has not developed yet uh, at all. Uh, for him. And I think the last one I have is Jamal Tinsley, which probably is not going to show a great deal. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he's gotten hot for 3 of 11, 3 of 11. Those are better than they used to be, but he's not, you know, that's not what he does. Um, he does, when he goes to the rim, though, he's certain of it. 5 of 7 in that restricted area so far this year. So that uh, is our run through our players. Uh, there are a bunch of you that are in the chat room. I, I admire that. You know what? I'm going to try. I don't know how long we've gone. What time is it? So we just did about 20 minutes. Um, I will uh, – Gavin says that Dwight Howard's shot chart is like faves. Give me a quick second. Uh, talk amongst yourselves, and I will see if I can um, pull these up really – see if I can pull one up really quickly. Um It'll, I'll have to do a little differently than I pre-save those. Uh, why don't you put two or three players around the NBA you might be curious about, and I will check those non-jazz player shot charts for you as well, and then i got to wrap this uh, baby up. Do you want Dwight Howard this year with 163 shots, or do you want Dwight Howard last year, I guess would be the question. Let me quickly get that answer. What would you like, uh, Gavin, on Dwight Howard? Do you want just this year with the Lakers, um, or do you want – um, this year. All right. Then let me pull up Dwight Howard. I think this is going to work. I have to just make a little change. I'm going to have to screen share with you is what I'm going to have to do. So it is loading. It is at 78%. It is stalling. It is loading data. Now, this is really, you'll see this. This is crazy. Let's see if I can get this up on the Google Plus for you. We'll do a screen share instead. I love the Google Plus little features. All right, that is Ennis Cantor. That is here is Dwight Howard. Let's see if you guys have that. Do you have that screen share now on your screen? If it says NBA stats up up top, I probably probably should not be actually showing all this of the site, but um, don't steal that. Um, so there it is. There is the Dwight Howard. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's just nothing at all 
outside of uh, the lane for him in the slightest bit. All right, give me another player. Nobody has given me another player. I can end this thing. Is there anybody anybody else wants to see really quickly before we uh, – oh, Kevin Durant. Good call. Who was that? Gavin again. Um, and, and, all right, we'll do two guys from tomorrow. I mean, I, this is part of my prep, but I usually chart it a little differently. And um, as for those of you who listen to the broadcast, know that I will drop this into the broadcast every now and then uh, with Ron, too much Ron's probably amusement. Gallinari, left side three the other night. He was one of 26 from three. Took it as a key shot of the game. Uh, Kevin Durant, do you want this year or do you want – Gavin, do you want Kevin Durant this year or do you want him last year? God, Sham, God, that's beautiful. Uh, Gavin, you want last year on Kevin Durant. That's usually what I look at, by the way. I haven't done, started using this year's stuff except for, for our guys. 1,297 shots. This might take a second to load up. Oh, it's actually already at 87%. That probably means it's loading wrong. Sometimes, no. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is awesome. This is awesome. You are not going to believe this. This is so cool. Ready? Remember, red is bad. Yellow is average. Green is good, right? Right? Here we go. Is that awesome or is that awesome? He doesn't have a bad spot on the floor. How insane is Kevin Durant? Sixty-three percent at the rim. I'm looking at this for the first time with you right now. Holy smokes! I've never seen anything like this. I do these every day. Look at that mid-range: fifty-four percent, forty-six percent, forty-nine percent, forty-six percent. Those are the shots you're supposed to force him into. Forty-eight percent from mid-block right. Forty. The threes are ridiculous. So angle right three is the shot you want Kevin Durant to take. At 31%, that's that's a point of possession. That's still a point per shot at 31.7, right? It's a little under. Uh, Brett wants to know, I still think Kevin... Yes, I still think Chris Paul is better than Kevin Durant. I just think Chris Paul is fabulous. Though the Clippers are a mess. Um, that, I'm just staring. I have yet to see this, guys. And I've done all of these. I have. This is the first player... Uh, this is the first player I've seen who does not have anything red on his chart. That is really awesome. All right, Kevin Martin was the next one that was asked for, right? And then we'll probably wrap this up. You know, I should have left that. I could have left that up there right there instead of you watching me type. Uh, it's kind of a, This is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, but if I ask you guys if this is a success, I assume you'll probably say yes because... You listened to it or watched it, but I wouldn't mind any feedback on this if um, from you. I'm gonna do uh, Kevin Martin. Bad year last. You want bad year last year in Houston? I guess would probably two years ago on Martin. Let's go bad. This is bad year last year on Kevin Martin. I've never seen anything like Kevin Durant's shot chart. That was totally nutty. It's at 66 percent. It's loading data, and let me go screen share with you one last time. Screen share. And Kevin Martin, really his beauty is he gets fouled. Um, and he's a pretty good mid-range shooter. So he's he's got the mid-range stuff. Didn't hit the threes great last year. This is last year's number. I'll pull up and see how he's been with Oklahoma City because I'll bet he is um, he's a little different. But that's pretty impressive right there. Uh, give me one second. You actually will probably – if I don't change the screen save, you'll probably – See me change? No, I don't think so. I'm going to actually just delete it. Then I think your screen save will disappear. Because otherwise I wouldn't know what screen share to do. Here's Kevin Martin. He's at 83% loading. You guys have my ugly mug right now, too, don't you? All right. Oh, this is very interesting. He has definitely changed since he's moved to the... So we saw the last one. And now let's go find this year's screen share. And this is going to look a good deal different. It's pretty interesting. Now, he is having a great year. Uh, but look at that left corner, 3, 11 of 19. And the angle threes, he is on fire. The mid-range shot, he just doesn't take as much. They may be instructing him not to, frankly. They don't. They, they're a numbers team. 
Um, but they may not want him to take that three. So that may be a good deal of what's going on there. All right, I think that wraps us up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And uh, that wraps up our YouTube. How was my $17 breakfast? It's good. I'm now just having a regular cup of coffee. I'm not having $8 espresso again, I'll tell you that. You know what? Here's my last parting shot, since I'll just take cheap shots at Oklahoma City every day. Yelp is the greatest phenomena ever when you travel. But Yelp completely is dependent upon the Yelpers having taste. Right? And I don't think anybody in Oklahoma City has taste. We went to, like, their greatest pizzeria ever. And I am telling you, Setabello in downtown Salt Lake killed it, and the guy, Joe Kruger, I was with, points out that Red Rock was probably better, too. I'll tell you how I really feel. Dinner at Wild Ginger would be better tonight than any place I'll go on the water, on the Puget Sound. See ya.